SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, Study Prep, by Human Resource Prep. Let's begin with a couple of questions and answers. 1. The concept whereby organizations consider the needs of all stakeholders, when making decisions, is called corporate social responsibility. 2. The practice of purchasing and using resources wisely, by balancing economic, social, and environmental concerns, with the goal of securing the interests of present and future generations, is called sustainability. 3. A small but growing organization is just beginning to build its corporate social responsibility program. Which objective would be most ideal for the organization at this stage? To create a CSR program that is aligned with the corporate business strategy. 4. A correct statement about the forces that are shaping corporations' CSR strategies is CSR has increased individuals' rights to privacy. Note that social and political reactions to the threat that technology poses to individual privacy have created many protections for individuals' rights to privacy. Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR Corporate Social Responsibility, also known as Corporate Sustainability, or Corporate Citizenship, represents a firm's commitment to operate in an ethical and sustainable manner by engaging in activities that promote and support philanthropy, transparency, sustainability, and ethically sound governance practices. For HR, CSR has the benefits of improved recruitment, greater retention of top talent, and greater employee productivity. What are the benefits of CSR? Winning new businesses. Enhanced relationships with stakeholders. Attracting and maintaining a happy workforce. Media interest and a positive reputation. Access to funding opportunities. Enhancing your influence in the industry. Differentiating yourself from the competitor. Saving money on energy and operating cost. Increase in customer retention. Evolution of CSR. CSR has evolved from donations and volunteering to where companies use CSR as a strategic advantage to engage employees and to increase levels of productivity. 1. CSR now includes a wider range of decisions and its effects are on a far-reaching group of stakeholders. 2. Focus on CSR has moved from corporate sidelines to the center stage of business initiatives. 3. CSR has become integrated into organizations' mission and core business strategies. Forces shaping CSR today. 1. Technology. CSR information and effects are measurable, and resultant data are analyzed using technological software and systems for patterns, impact, and reporting. 2. Environmental concerns. There are increased sustainability opportunities, standards, requirements, and regulations. 3. Economic pressures. There is an increased business return potential for sustainability efforts, and CSR has an enhanced value to employees. 4. Sociopolitical forces. There are increased pressures from civil rights, social rights groups, and rapidly evolving diversity and environmental interests. Time for a question. When is it appropriate to create a corporate social responsibility program in an organization? A. At the innovative stage, where the organization is resilient and regenerating income. B. At the maturity stage, where the organization is stable and can absorb sustainability costs. C. At the establishment stage, where the organization is engaged in creating and establishing its business strategy. D. At the growth stage, where performance and productivity take center stage. The answer is C. Ideally, CSR should be incorporated into an organization's strategic plan, from the onset, which is the establishment, or startup, or nascent stage. By integrating CSR into the strategic plan, core business processes, and stakeholder management, organizations can achieve the ultimate goal, of creating both social value, and corporate value. Note that the public are stakeholders in any organization's strategic plan, as they represent shareholders, customers, employees, suppliers, etc. Strategic use of CSR, in firms. 1. To compete for and retain the best talent. 2. To produce scalable solutions and data-rich results. 3. To boost employer brand and public goodwill. 4. To expand global reach 
and compete in the global markets. Business Case Reasons for CSR Strategic Value 1. Business Growth 2. Return on Capital 3. Risk Management 1. CSR has evolved from a short-range, public goodwill-centered approach, to a strategic approach, that is integrated in an organization's mission, and strategy. 2. The term stakeholders, has been redefined to include persons affecting, or affected by, an organization's social and environmental actions, and decisions. 3. The term HR sustainability sweet spot, refers to HR becoming a sustainability resource, for business leaders. What is the CSR Maturity Curve? CSR Maturity Curve details how organizations move from 1. Compliance 2. To Integration 3. To Transformation Compliance and CSR Maturity Curve In the compliance stage, organizations assume a defensive posture and see social responsibility as a reluctant cost of being in business. CSR is viewed as a short-range response to regulatory requirements, or to avoid negative publicity. At this stage, CSR may involve decent corporate citizenship, but CSR efforts do not align, and often conflict with the corporate strategy. Integration and CSR Maturity Curve In the integration stage, CSR is integrated, into the regular functioning of the business. Organizations redesign their processes, procedures, products, and services, to be more ethically, and environmentally, responsible and sustainable. Transformation and CSR Maturity Curve In the transformation stage, a company redefines its mission, its strategy, and its brand, to reflect a commitment to CSR. In this stage, sustainability leaders, embed real, measurable, ongoing commitments to sustainability practices, as a strategic differentiator, going beyond the immediate benefits, of compliance, obligations, and efficiency. Become a Human Resource Prep Member Membership Perks Unlimited PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, SHRMSCP Questions, Answers, and Explanations In-depth explanations of key terms and concepts for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams Instructional videos on exam resources for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams. 4 Key HR, Opportunity Areas, in CSR 1. Culture Change CSR can be incorporated into the company culture. The lower on the CSR maturity curve a company is at, the larger, and more challenging, the culture change will be. Increasing stakeholder engagement, and becoming more responsive on CSR issues, may be tough, but it is of critical importance, and HR can help actualize these human-related aims. 2. Corporate Strategy The more directly involved stakeholders are, in the strategic process, the more central HR's role can become, in strategic planning. The more central employee behaviors are, to successfully carrying out a CSR strategy, the more central HR's role in strategic implementation becomes. 3. Organization Effectiveness CSR initiatives require actions, decisions, and changes regarding corporate processes and structure. Will CSR have its own function? Will external partnerships or consultants be needed? Does HR have the skills and resources to match the structures and processes to the organization's strategy and culture? 4. Human Capital Development Creating a CSR strategy, redefines a company's mission, goals, and employee initiatives. HR opportunities, and capabilities, include aligning the corporate strategy with the CSR strategy, and employee development goals. Time for some more questions and answers. 5. How have technological forces, shaped current corporate social responsibility practices? System-based, and analytical capabilities have made the CSR initiatives measurable, and CSR impact, more evident. 6. A corporation has redefined its mission, and brand, to demonstrate a commitment, to corporate social responsibility strategies, principles, and initiatives. Which phase of the CSR maturity curve, is the organization in? The transformation stage. 7. HR establishes a telecommuting program, as a sustainability initiative. How does this impact? the organization's sustainability drive. 
by reducing the organization's carbon footprint. 8. Why is ethics an inherent part of a corporate social responsibility program? Because ethics dictates behavioral guidelines for an organization and its members. What is the OECD? The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, is an intergovernmental economic organization with 37 member countries. The OECD was founded in 1961 to stimulate economic progress and world trade. It is a forum of countries describing themselves as committed to democracy and the market economy, providing a platform to compare policy experiences, seek answers to common problems, identify good practices, and coordinate domestic and international policies of its members. Generally, OECD members are high income economies with a very high human development in HDI and are regarded as developed countries. OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises provides recommendations for responsible business conduct in a global context. What are the OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises? The OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises are recommendations providing principles and standards for responsible business conduct for multinational corporations operating in or from countries adhering to the declaration. The guidelines are legally non-binding, but the OECD Investment Committee and its Working Party on Responsible Business Conduct encourage implementation among adherents. OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises range from issues on 1. Employment and industrial relations 2. Human rights 3. Environment 4. Information disclosure 5. Combating bribery 6. Consumer interests 7. Application of and access to science and technology 8. Competition 9. Taxation Now, let's try a couple of questions. Corporate governance is the system by which companies are directed and controlled. How does the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, OECD, guidelines, enhance corporate governance? A. They set standards, monitor, and report on the corporate citizenship of member countries. B. They create mandatory ethical guidelines for globalized corporations. C. They establish national laws to align with responsible, global, shared value initiatives. D. They enable countries address concerns on globalization. The answer is D. The OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises are recommendations addressed by governments to multinational enterprises operating in or from adhering countries. They provide non-binding principles and standards for responsible business conduct in a global context, consistent with applicable laws and internationally recognized standards. The OECD guidelines enables countries address concerns on globalization. The OECD guidelines are not intended to override local laws or expose multinational enterprises MNEs, to conflicting expectations. Question. What is a National Contact Point, NCP? A. Entity responsible for the promotion of the OECD guidelines on a national level. B. The primary body responsible for overseeing the functioning of the SA 8000. C. Specific guidance in industrial sectors to help enterprises implement the UN Global Compact. D. Entity responsible for the promotion of the co-principles on a local level. The answer is A. Each OECD adhering country has to set up a national contact point, NCP, whose main role is to further the effectiveness of the guidelines by undertaking promotional activities, handling inquiries, and contributing to the resolution of issues that arise from the alleged non-observance of the guidelines in that specific country. The NCPs assist enterprises to take appropriate measures to further the implementation of the OECD guidelines. They also provide a mediation and conciliation platform. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. United Nations Global Compact The United Nations Global Compact is a non-binding, principle-based, United Nations Pact, or framework, 
to encourage businesses worldwide to adopt sustainable and socially responsible policies and to report on their implementation. Under the Global Compact, companies are brought together with UN agencies, labor groups, and civil society. The principles were introduced in 2000 and address human rights, labor, environmental, and anti corruption issues. The UN Global Compact requires participating companies to produce an annual communication on progress. COP that details their work to embed the 10 principles into their strategies and operations, as well as efforts to support societal priorities. Companies that fail to report or to meet the criteria over time may be removed from the initiative. UN Global Compact 10 Principles 1. Businesses should support and respect the protection of internationally proclaimed human rights. 2. Make sure that they are not complicit in human rights abuses. 3. Businesses should uphold the freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. 4. The elimination of all forms of forced and compulsory labor. 5. The effective abolition of child labor. 6. The elimination of discrimination in respect of employment and occupation. 7. Businesses should support a precautionary approach to environmental challenges. 8. Undertake initiatives to promote greater environmental responsibility. 9. Encourage the development and diffusion of environmentally friendly technologies. 10. Businesses should work against corruption in all its forms, including extortion and bribery. The UN Global Compact. In pictures, notice the areas that fall under human rights, labor standards, environment, and anti corruption. Question. Dash is the act of a corporation, cloaking its lack of social responsibility, by insincere membership in the UN Global Compact. A. Green hopping. B. Blue washing. C. False cloak. D. Green fraud. The answer is B. Blue washing is the act of a corporation cloaking its lack of social responsibility, by insincere membership in the UN Global Compact. It is a technique employed by companies to form collaborations and associations, to portray themselves as being compliant with the Ten Principles of United Nations Global Compact, while not being so in actuality. Greenwashing is the process of conveying a false impression, or providing misleading information, about how a company's products are environmentally sound, when they are not. Co-Principles The Co-Principles is one of the earliest employer-led efforts, to establish an international code of ethics. A network of business leaders from Europe, Japan, and the United States, the Co Roundtable, began meeting regularly in 1986 to promote moral capitalism and as a response to increased trade tensions. The Co Roundtable is based on the idea that the world business community should play a principal role in improving economic and social conditions. The Co principles are rooted in two basic ethical ideals, Kyosei and human dignity. The Japanese concept of Kyosei, means living and working together for the common good, enabling cooperation, and mutual prosperity to coexist, with healthy and fair competition. Human dignity, refers to the sacredness or value of each person as an end, not simply as a means to the fulfillment of others' purposes. Co-Principles Principle 1. The responsibilities of businesses, beyond shareholders toward stakeholders. Principle 2. The economic and social impact of business toward innovation, justice, and world community. Principle 3. Business behavior, beyond the letter of law, toward a spirit of trust. Principle 4. Respect for international and domestic rules. Principle 5. Support for multilateral trade. Principle 6. Respect for the environment. Principle 7. Avoidance of illicit operations. ISO 2600. ISO 26000 Guidance on Social Responsibility, is an international standard, providing guidelines for corporate social responsibility. It was released by the International Organization for Standardization, and its goal is to contribute to global sustainable development, by encouraging business and other organizations, to practice social responsibility, to improve their impacts on their workers, their natural environments, and their communities. The International Organization for Standardization, is the world's largest developer of voluntary international standards. ISO 26000 is a quality standard, though not for certification, that provides guidance on key themes of social responsibility, across a broad spectrum of topics.
It contains principles of social and environmental responsibility, as well as guidance for action, and expectations for implementation. The contents of ISO 26000 include, 1. Concepts, terms, and definitions related to social responsibility. 2. Background, trends, and characteristics of social responsibility. 3. Principles and practices relating to social responsibility. 4. The core subjects and issues of social responsibility. 5. Integrating, implementing, and promoting socially responsible behavior throughout the organization and through its policies and practices within its sphere of influence. 6. Identifying and engaging with stakeholders. 7. Communicating commitments, performance, and other information related to social responsibility. SA 8000. Social Accountability International, SAI, is an international non governmental organization that aims to improve workplaces and communities by developing socially responsible standards for certification. SA 8000, one of the earliest certification standards, is a certifiable stand focusing on human rights and labor relations, providing both process and performance criteria. It is based on both United Nations and ELO standards. SA 8000 is often used as a tool for ensuring human rights in extended supply chains, rather than being limited to only direct employees. SA 8000 focuses not only on standards of performance, but also on management systems that need to be put in place to ensure the proper outcomes. SA 8000 Components SA 8000 Components focus on nine key areas of human rights and labor relations child labor, forced or compulsory labor, health and safety freedom of association, and right to collective bargaining, discrimination, disciplinary practices, working hours, remuneration, and management systems. The Global Reporting Initiative, GRI, G4 Sustainability Reporting Guidelines. The GRI Sustainability Reporting Guidelines is the most widely used sustainability reporting framework in the world. It enables all companies and organizations to report on their economic, environmental, social, and governance performance. The GRI guidelines offer reporting principles, standard disclosures, and an implementation manual for the preparation of sustainability reports by organizations, regardless of their size, sector, or location. The fourth generation of the GRI guidelines, G4, was launched in May 2013 and has been revised to reflect important current and future trends in sustainability reporting. The Global Reporting Initiative GRI, G4 Sustainability Reporting Guidelines, are the universally accepted standard for reporting of an organization's sustainability efforts and progress, enabling meaningful and consistent comparisons of multinational organizations' sustainability performance. GRI G4 Two-Part Guidelines 1. Reporting Principles and Standard Disclosures. 2. Implementation Manual. This picture depicts the four levels of CSR. Economic responsibility, legal responsibility, ethical responsibility, and philanthropic responsibility. What is the best starting point for developing and implementing a CSR strategy? Gaining a clear perspective of the work that has already been done internationally on defining CSR matters and responses. What is the framework for creating a CSR strategy? 1. Broad statements of principles, upon which an organization-wide CSR strategy, will be based. For example, the United Nations Global Compact. 2. Highly detailed guidance, notably the ISO, International Organization for Standardization, and SI, Social Accountability International, standards, that address social responsibility, and sustainability issues. 3. Reporting frameworks, for example. The Global Reporting Initiatives, G4 Guidelines. Now, let's take a couple of questions and answers. 9. For the PRISM Corporation to be considered sustainable, what areas of its initiatives are assessed? Environmental, economic, and social initiatives. 10. Economic, social, and environmental impact metrics used to determine an organization's success is called triple bottom line. 11. A system of rules and processes, set up by an organization, to ensure its compliance with local and international laws, accounting rules, 
ethical norms, internal codes of conduct, and other standards, is called corporate governance. 12. A set of behavioral guidelines that an organization expects all of its directors, managers, and employees to follow to ensure appropriate moral and ethical business standards is called ethics. The CSR strategic process. Step 1. Executive commitment. Executive commitment must be obtained at the inception of the process. The key to getting executive commitment is making a business case by demonstrating that CSR has business value and contributes to the bottom line. CSR can provide strategic value by 1. Improving the organization's ability to attract and retain top talent. 2. Enhancing innovation and product development capabilities by pursuing sustainability sweet spots. 3. Cost savings on operations, transportation, and energy usage. 4. Improving the corporate brand image, where it is seen as ethical and sustainable to the general public. 5. Removing sanctions through improved compliance measures. Step 2. Assessment. The assessment step aims to provide a detailed picture of where the company is at present with regard to existing CSR decisions and initiatives. After this is completed, there is a conception of the path in which the organization intends to go. There are two components to the assessment step. 1. Reviewing systems and procedures within the organization to determine the current state of sustainability. 2. Gathering input from internal and external stakeholders. Step 3. Infrastructure creation. This step involves creating the framework that will be responsible for guiding, overseeing, administering, reviewing, and championing the CSR strategy. This focuses on the how. Questions to answer include, will there be a separate lead for the CSR function? Will a distinct sustainability department be created? Will HR lead the CSR strategic implementation? For global corporations, will there be local functions, units, or individuals responsible for local efforts, and how will these be coordinated with global initiatives and goals? How will data be collected, who will it go to, and who will evaluate results? Will outside consulting organizations or individuals need to be brought in to organize and administer the effort? Step 4. Plan Implementation Based on the strategy, this step involves setting priorities and objectives and implementing the action plans. These should include a clear sense of how intermediate, tactical steps will lead to the achievement of long-term objectives. It should be clearly defined who the accountability persons are and how results will be measured. Step 5. Measurement, Reporting, and Evaluation Using the G4 reporting criteria as a foundation, this step makes certain that all objectives have corresponding metrics and that a complete reporting and evaluation infrastructure is in place. Each person in organization should know what, when, and how to provide data, and those responsible for analyzing and reporting on the data must have a clear agenda, schedule, and set of procedures. Step 6. Reassessment and Revision Based on the evaluation of results, tactics and strategic goals are reassessed and revised. It is also crucial to deliberate on the sustainability maturity curve, reassess where the organization is on the curve, and consider what next steps would move the organization further up the curve. Critical to this step is having an infrastructure and process in place to provide the company with evidence of progress achieved and the next steps needed. Have you subscribed to this channel? Please do. Would you like to see more videos like this for free? Then please subscribe and click on the like button. Question. The Flourish organization has moved to the plan implementation stage of its CSR strategic process. Which of the following will apply at this stage? A. Determine if HR will lead the CSR initiative and if CSR will be a business unit or a business function. B. Apply the GRIG4 guidelines to address goals and objectives. C. Execution of determined action plans. D. Apply the global compact principles to the strategic framework. The answer is C. The plan implementation stage involves setting priorities and objectives and implementing the action plans.
These should include a clear sense of how intermediate, tactical steps, will lead to the achievement, of long-term objectives. It should be clearly defined, who the accountability persons are, and how results will be measured. Roles within CSR or sustainability departments, include 1. Sustainability. Focus on environmental issues, initiatives and strategies. 2. Monitoring and evaluation. Measure a company's progress towards its goals. 3. Reporting. Analyze and document metrics. 4. Employee engagement. Activate the power of the workforce. 5. Community investment. Focus on social purpose initiatives, within the community, global or local. 6. Partnerships and events. Work with nonprofits or associations to promote a cause, or give back to the community. 7. Marketing, communications, or public relations. Communicate the impact of a company's programs. Question. The main purpose of, is to boost economic development of its members, by expanding trade. A. The OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises. B. UN Global Compact. C. The Co Roundtable Principles, for International Businesses. D. SA 8000. The answer is A. The OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises, is a set of recommendations by governments, to multinational enterprises, MNEs, to voluntarily adopt to minimize, and resolve impacts, which may arise from their operations, in foreign jurisdictions. And to encourage positive contributions to economic, social and environmental progress. The main purpose of the OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises, is to boost economic development of its members, by expanding trade. Question. The OECD Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises. A. Is the only comprehensive global guidelines, of corporate conduct, endorsed by governments. B. Are a set of eight general principles, on sustainability, and environmentally responsible business conduct. C. Are audited global standards, for socially responsible, and ethical business. D. Establish the tenets of moral capitalism, and global consumer protection. The answer is A. The OECD guidelines, cover issues such as human rights, environment, labor, anti-bribery, corporate governance, disclosure, supply chain management, and taxation. The guidelines, are the only multilaterally agreed, and comprehensive code of responsible business conduct, that governments have committed to promoting. Question. Which of the following is true, about the OECD guidelines? A. Compliance with the regulations of the guidelines, is obligatory. B. An informal framework exists, to ensure adherence to the guidelines. C. Each adherent to the guidelines, sets up an agency, called the National Contact Point. D. There are UN sanctions and penalties, for violations of the guidelines. The answer is C. Each adhering country to the OECD guidelines, has to set up a National Contact Point, NCP, an entity responsible for the promotion of the guidelines, on a national level. Question. The UN Global Compact, A, is a binding code of ethical conduct, for global enterprises. B. Mandates observance of its principles, on the triple bottom line. C. Advances its principles, as an aspirational set of shared values. D. Requires revision and updates, to environmental laws of member countries. The answer is C. The UN Global Compact advances its principles, as an aspirational set of shared values. The UN Global Compact supports companies, to do business responsibly by aligning their strategies and operations, with 10 principles on human rights, labor, environment and anti-corruption, and take strategic actions to advance, broader societal goals, such as the UN Sustainable Development Goals, with an emphasis on collaboration, and innovation. The UN Global Compact is not binding, or mandatory, and does not require revisions, to laws of countries. Question. Transnational corporations are defined as, a. Entities formed through strategic alliance, to engage in diversified production, for economies of scale, globally. b. Doing majority of their business, in the country in which they are headquartered. c. Doing business in the country in which they are headquartered, and in neighboring countries, in the same region. d. 
parent entities that control assets of affiliated entities, in foreign countries? The answer is D. Transnational corporations can be defined as parent entities, that control assets of affiliated entities, in foreign countries. The transnational corporation's aim, is to maximize local responsiveness, but also to gain benefits from global integration. Transnational companies often try to create economies of scale upstream, in the value chain, and are locally adaptive in downstream activities, such as sales and marketing. It is characterized by an integrated, and mutually dependent network of subsidiaries, all over the world. An example of a transnational corporation, is Unilever. Question. Which of the following is true, about corporate social responsibility, CSR, policies, and programs? A. CSR policy has a sustainable impact, when it is initiated, and operated, at the local level. B. CSR policies may make it more expensive, to create economies of scale. C. CSR program outcomes are being included, in corporate financial, and business reporting. D. Several host countries, are requiring that businesses, establish triple bottom line programs, and services. The answer is C. Corporate social responsibility, significantly affects the firm's financial performance, by developing a positive image among the stakeholders, and decreasing overall costs. The CSR report, covers important areas, such as the company's goals and objectives, environmental performance, and the human impact. As a result, CSR program results and outcomes, are being included in financial, and business performance reporting. Question. At what stage of the corporate social responsibility, CSR, strategic process, does a transnational corporation, decide whether there will be local clusters of management, and how these clusters will be coordinated, with corporate initiatives? A. Step 1. Executive commitment. B. Step 2. Assessment. C. Step 3. Infrastructure creation. D. Step 4. Plan implementation. The answer is C. Step 3. Infrastructure creation. This step involves creating the framework, that will be responsible for guiding, overseeing, administering, reviewing, and championing the CSR strategy. This focuses on the how. For global corporations, the infrastructure creation stage, will involve determining, if there will be local functions, clusters, or leadership responsible for local efforts, and how will these be coordinated, with global initiatives. Question. The Granite Corporation has established a corporate social responsibility unit, that is incorporated into the HR function. The HR director has received approval from executive management, that the unit will focus on meeting specifically, the technical requirements of CSR regulations. The unit has what kind of culture? A. Transformational culture. B. Sustainability culture. C. Compliance culture. D. Hybrid culture. The answer is C. The CSR unit has a compliance culture. In the compliance culture, corporate social responsibility, CSR, is focused on creating rules-based structures, and systems, to support corporate adherence to CSR-related laws, regulations, and norms. It is the lowest level of the CSR maturity curve. Become a Human Resource Prep Member Membership Perks Unlimited PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, SHRMSCP Questions, Answers, and Explanations In-depth explanations of key terms and concepts for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams Instructional videos on exam resources for the SHRMCP, SHRMSCP, PHR, SPHR exams. Question. How has corporate social responsibility, CSR, approaches, evolved in corporations? A. They have redefined business strategic goals, and missions, based on CSR codes. B. They create public goodwill, and positive community relations for business prominence, of the organization. C. They have mandated employee involvement, in CSR initiatives, at lower levels. D. They are the principal source of global organization's earnings, and financial growth. The answer is A. CSR approaches have progressed in corporations, to redefine business strategy and goals, based on CSR principles. 
Businesses now incorporate social and environmental concerns, in corporate strategies, as CSR is viewed as a win-win strategy, that benefits the company, and society. Question. The Lackey Corporation has suffered a bad reputation in the social media, for engaging a cost-effective supplier, who has been cited severally, for child labor violations, and unsafe practices in its factories. To reduce its reputational risk. Which certification should the Lackey Corporation seek from its suppliers? A. UN Global Compact. B. ISO 26000. C. SA 8000. D. OECD Guidelines. The answer is C. The SA 8000 standard is the leading social certification standard for factories and organizations across the globe. It was established by Social Accountability International in 1997 and helps certified organizations demonstrate their dedication to the fair treatment of workers. SA 8000 measures social performance in eight areas important to social accountability in workplaces, anchored by a management system element that drives continuous improvement. It employs a rigorous approach to ensure the highest quality of social compliance in business supply chains and enables companies develop and improve social accountability across their operations. Note that SA 8000 is the only certification listed in the options. And with that we come to the end of today's lesson. Check out the description box below for additional resources towards earning the PHR, SPHR, SHRMCP, and SHRMSCP. Facebook Practice Group. Class Marker PHR, SPHR, Practice Exams. Books on Amazon. Teachable PHR, SPHR Online Course. Remember to subscribe and like this video.